and ligament is going to be very similar to tendon in, insofar as it's dense. Here's a medial collateral ligament. It's dense, but it's even more compact than tendon is. And you can see these fibers running parallel. Bone will look hyperechoic. That's on the bottom of the screen. That's bright. And it usually has a shadow, that, which is deep to it. In this case, you see this sort of bright signal coming here and this layering of this bright signal here. That's just reverberation. What that is is reverberation of this bright signal. It's so bright and, and it's so intense that it, that it um, reverberates down. Cartilage, well, it depends what you're looking at. I mean, what kind of cartilage are we dealing with here? If you're looking at hyaline cartilage, which is on the surface of the femur, which is this arc on the left side of the screen, that's going to appear hyper, hypoechoic. And it's going to appear dark or hypoechoic because it's full of fluid, hyaline cartilage. Compared to the meniscus, which is this triangular structure sitting right next to it, which is made of fibrocartilage and going to appear brighter than hyaline cartilage. So again, fibrocartilage is more dense. It has less fluid. It's going to appear brighter. And hyaline cartilage, darker. And it has the fluid. A nerve cross-section in transverse um, looks like a honeycomb. And the interior of the fascicles are, hyper, are hypoechoic, but all the supporting tissue, the perineurium, the epineurium, all of that is hyperechoic because it's, again, dense um, echogenic tissue. I have one more slide for you, and this is the end of my presentation. Um, and it's just on ergonomics. And I wasn't asked to specifically speak to this, but um, if you keep in mind anything, and especially because we, we all treat people who have various musculoskeletal injuries, Keep in mind your own ergonomics as you're approaching this. Uh, there were a few recommendations that were specifically made by the AIUM. Uh, recently had a webinar on, um, on uh, proper ergonomics and uh, ultrasonography. And one consideration is actually don't wear gloves. Now, you say, well, I'm going to get ultrasound gel on my hand. Well, yeah, you're going to get ultrasound gel on your hand. You're probably going to get it all over your sleeve and your pants and everything else. But you know that's OK. It washes off. It's, it's water soluble. Um, you know, just don't wear your evening gown while you're, while you're scanning. Um, you can avoid eye strain if you focus on distant objects now and then. So if you're doing a lot of scanning and you're looking at the screen, now and then look, look across the room. Make sure that the screen is high enough so that you don't have to be hunched over it. And keep the patient close to you. We have this tendency to sort of keep the patient far away. But if you keep them close to you, then you won't have to reach as much and you won't get as many um, ergonomic injuries. By the way, ultrasonographers, sonographers and um, techs specifically, have the highest rate of occupational injuries of any profession. Um, and don't, gri don't grip the transducer too tightly. The pincer grip, by the way, fatigues much more quickly than the palmer grip does. So if you palmer grip a transducer, you're going to be able to last a lot longer than if you pincer grip it. Now, no one told me that when I started, so I still pincer grip. So I'm going to be done in like a year, probably, with, with tendinopathy. But um, that is the end of this presentation.